our first guest, esteemed guest, uh, we have Cal Mascari here on the show from Harvest House Atlantic, and that's awesome. That's uh, great news from Harvest House Atlantic, as we talked about just before the break. Uh, just excellent uh, money coming in, and that, uh, you know, it's got to feel pretty good, getting uh, $86,500 from Aviva. And not only that, but we're talking about a little bit from the federal government as well. Mm -hmm. Really pleased to get it. It was a real blessing for us because we'll be able to enlarge our kitchen twice the size, um, have some walk-in freezer, walk-in cooler, upgraded equipment. Uh, what we started with, the small kitchen we have, we initially were feeding 30, 40, you know, 50 people, and now it's up over 100 a night, 150 meals a day, and still having that small kitchen. So when the community helped us to be awarded with this through voting, and, and it was just an incredible blessing. A lot of excitement in the homeless community right now because we're going to have such a nice kitchen, and we'll be able to um, uh, enlarge our seating capacity for the meal program by about 70 to 80 seats as well. So that's awesome news and let's uh, let's have a look at that. The presentation from Aviva, the $86,500. Let's take a look. On behalf of Aviva Canada and the Aviva Community Fund, I'd like to thank you for being included in today's ceremony. It's great to see firsthand the impact that you've created here. We know it's not easy to win funding for the Aviva Community Fund. It takes dedication and commitment to rally the support of the community. So congratulations to everyone that helped with that. It's ideas like yours that have a positive impact on communities. Together, you've made a tremendous difference in the lives of people in the community of Moncton. Aviva Community Fund has been in existence for eight years. It's a national um, contest that we have, and it gets the community involved by its voting process. So um, events like this will gain the support of the community. They go in, they vote for it. Like I said, it's across the nation. So you're up against some pretty stiff competition in some pretty big cities. So, you know, Moncton compared to Toronto, Vancouver. So you really have to gain that community support. What they look for is to make sure that it's sustainable, that it's something that's gonna support the community on an ongoing basis, not just a one and done. So the fact that they're feeding the community of Moncton um, and that they're doing some renovations that will help expand this, is really what brought it to the forefront on this is a good event to or a charity to give some money to. So Cal, yeah, that probably was pretty satisfying to take a sledgehammer to that wall there, but uh, certainly excellent news from the Aviva part. So what went into uh, submitting to that kind of a contest, to that kind of, that whole situation, how to come about? Uh, it was a, a lady we have on, uh, Denise, that found out about it, and she began to put the, the word out for it. We were put out to votes all over Atlantic Canada. I heard it went as far as Tennessee, and uh, my mom was down in Arizona, and other people in Scotland and different places. It goes all over, and people that know you, that have been touched by um, <clears throat> someone's life that's been there, had a chance to vote, and encouraged their family and friends to do so. So it's a really great awareness for all those that are involved, because you're more known. People know about you, they can support more, and people can feel like they're giving in to... <clears throat> helping their local community. Yeah, and we talked just before we went to air about how not only is this something uh, that affects the community, but you personally, this is your 20th year as, as well, executive director and, and really the guy who kind of calls the shots in the back end and, right. you know, for Harvest House in this 20th year, you know, to be able to make these pushes forward, how does it feel for you to be really a career lifelong guy in the back? Well, to see where, where it's come from, as I was just looking at the, the uh, visual of the building there, and it used to be an odd duck tavern at one time, and we were able to get that place and be able to help homeless people, and it was Matt's on the the floor initially and then eventually the uh, NB housing came along and helped us to build a nice nicer shelters so they have beds lockers laundry rooms and to see where it's come from a little uh, storefront on Mountain Road that just had five people initially you know to see where it's grown to where we have uh, 40 in shelter now um, 36 in our step up housing program for those that are working going to school or in programs somewhere so they can move forward with confidence and break the cycle of addictions and, and know that there's support and then the 23 bed facility that we have for addiction recovery for those struggling with severe addictions that addictions is growing out of control as well so to have a tri program where we can help everybody we don't have to turn anybody away if someone's really struggling we can help them with whatever needs they have and to connect people of compassion in the community to help make a difference for those that are in need and both get blessed at the end of the day you know some people have a need to give and want to feel like they're giving to the community so we invite uh, people to come and volunteer come and you know serve a meal serve a coffee uh, most relationships that we have with the people start over a meal 
you know, giving someone a meal, and I want to know why you're doing this. And it's so so wonderful that we have such a supportive community. We're very excited. And speaking through with that, as someone who who may never have, have seen this this program in action, or someone who may not quite know all that much about it, what does what does a day or a week look like for you guys down there at Harvest House? Very busy. Uh, from the time the morning starts, we have breakfast when they get up in the morning. Uh, there's programs that they can enter into through the day. There's giving back programs, give ways to give back to their community. Then there's a life skills in the afternoon, a drop-in center in the afternoon. People come in looking for help. Um, at 4 o'clock, there's a, a teaching time where they can come in and take a classroom setting with us. Supper right after that. And then the shelter is open in the evening for people to come in just looking for help, some looking for friendship, some um, just needing support along the way to feel like there's a bit of a family. You know, a lot of people we deal with have crashed and, and fallen on some hard times. And to have motherly figures and fatherly figures coming in, putting a hand on the shoulder, how are you doing today? You know, and especially over a meal. That's such a nice way to connect with people. So we're inviting, as we get this new kitchen up and running, we'll get back to the community and we'll have an open house. And we'll be looking for people to come and serve, business groups that want to come down, schools, church groups, whoever would like to come and just be part of a feeding program together. And just uh, surround the people that we care. And Moncton is a great community for saying we care. You know, the volunteers that are coming today, we're very thankful, really thankful for all that help to and make a difference. It's so awesome to see all the help in the community for sure. And then we talk about the 86.5, uh, well, $86,500 right. and then the federal government kicking in another 28 with the renovations. Another 28. You, we've talked about the renovated kitchen, but what exactly is, is all of that money going towards? Well, it'll go towards uh, expanding the kitchen to about double the size. The front doors now will be moved to where they used to be and that'll become a walk-in cooler. And then in the back room, we already have a room prepared from when we built it for a, a walk-in freezer. So now companies that are giving larger amounts of food, we can take it, where previously we haven't been able to because of small space. So it'll make a big difference for the food capacity we can have um, to, to uh, knock out some of the walls that are inside and make more room for the people. That's exciting because now there's larger uh, kitchen. Three times a year, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, we feed over 200 people, and they come in, in in shifts. So now we'll be able to seat a lot more and make them feel welcome and at home. So it's so awesome. It yeah. is really awesome. You, <laughs> you, get to, you get to you you get to feed all these people. It really kind of expands your your capabilities and your ability to serve even more people. Yeah. It really does. And some of those that um, come in for food, they get to know the community. And they, then once they receive some help themselves and start feeling connected to the community, many of them stay on and want to give back, which is really what we encourage. Learn to give back to your community. You know, addictions and, and sometimes that whole lifestyle can be more about me, me, and more of me. And the kingdom of self, we call it. But this is an opportunity for people that get some help, find a sense of community that they can begin to give back. And when people begin to give back, Mike, what a change. You just see it in their countenance, you see it in their, 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 their daily life. They just want to be a part of something significant. So they can move, they can start off at homelessness, come in, receive some love, some care, and some compassion, and then begin to pay that forward and help the next ones coming through. And to me, that's what it's all about. And then speaking in the community, in terms of events coming on, maybe not so much going to Harvest House, but there is right. an event coming up. Uh, it is this weekend at 9 a.m. on March the 18th through Spring to Action 2017 right. uh, down at the Moncton Press Club. So uh, how can people uh, get in on that one? Well, you can register right away because we'll need three days left. Uh, spring, the number two, action.ca, or call Harvest House office, 855-0626. Register. Then you can ask your friends and family to support you as you do a two-kilometer walk or, for those that are really energetic, a five-kilometer run and we're encouraging people to bring your pets um, at the shelter we welcome people with their pets because pets are very therapeutic for people so we we welcome them as long as they have them properly taken care of we welcome them to come with their pets while they're getting back on their feet so register come on out ask someone to sponsor you and ask them to get involved but if they don't get involved then they can sponsor you if you register right so register right away come and help us our goal is to have uh, 500 plus people walking and making a statement we're starting at the press club and just to walk and say, hey, we want to help make a difference in our city of Moncton. So great city of Moncton, come on out and help us make a difference. Spring2action.ca, Saturday morning, 9 o'clock at the Moncton Press Club. Bright and early, get everyone Bright out there early. for sure. Yeah. That's uh, definitely what we want to see.